In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I would recommend that you stop any compression set, but specifically we're going to focus in on some really, really good formations out of the Rams playbook that is going to be focusing in on the compression set of tight or tight flex or tight doubles or any of those uh, kind of formations. We're going to talk about how you can defend those at a very high level. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden players they can possibly become. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Your uh, screen. Every day we upload videos that can help you get better on both the offensive and the defensive side of the ball. We also share with you kind of live game plays that actually break down what we're thinking, why we're doing what we're doing. So if you want to get all that content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, like I said in this video, we're talking about defense. We're actually going to be specifically focusing in on a special defense from the nickel 335 wide formation. This concept can be applied outside of that, but I believe the nickel 335 wide is the best defense in the entire game. And if you want to get my entire defensive guide that walks you step by step through how to make this 335 wide absolutely locked down, you can get that defensive guide in the description for just 15 bucks. I'm going to leave a link down below. All right, guys, so I want to talk today about uh, this, this Los Angeles Rams playbook. I think it's one of the better uh, specifically to compression playbooks that, are, that exist in the game. What I mean by that is it's got, it's got three, I believe, three, four uh, different types of compression sets. Uh, so it gives us a lot of the concepts that people are going to be using. Now, we're going to start with this gun type flex, and we're going to kind of start with the foundation, which is the PA post shot. Now, your coaching adjustments are really the most important piece of this video, in my opinion. You want to get these right, especially if you're facing gun tight. It's really, really important. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to turn auto flip off. The reason why we're going to do this is because tight formations really can cause some trouble because the primary routes oftentimes are actually to the left side of the field, um, or I'm sorry, not to the left side of the field, but the, the, the field opposite side of the running back. If you leave auto flip on, that's fine, but I just want you to be prepared because crossing routes and corner routes and flood concepts, those are really prevalent in this formation. And so I just personally like to leave auto flip off. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna set my defense up to the wide side of the field. That's gonna pretty much tell us what route combination they're gonna run. We're gonna talk about why that's the case um, in this video, but what we wanna basically do is we wanna flip our 335 to whichever side the wide side of the field is. So if they have the ball on the right hash, we'll uh, probably run it as is. If they've had the ball on the left hash, then we're gonna flip the entire defense. So just kind of keep that in mind. I just personally like to take it off whenever I'm defending compression. I also turn it off whenever I'm defending gun bunch or bunch tight end because of how quickly they, they can flip things on you and really mess up with some of your adjustments. Auto alignment set to base align. This is the most important thing that I do against compression. I really believe in this right now. I really like this defense. I've had a, a lot of success um, in weekend league and things like that against tight sets. And it's really based on the foundation of a base alignment. The reason why this matters is because rollout crossers and rollout corner routes are really good, especially against zone drops, whenever the zone drops are dropping from an interior position. That's why strong close and gun tight and gun bunch and bunch tight end have really powerful corner routes because of where the, the the zone drops are coming from. Oftentimes the zone drops are coming from linebackers or slot corners who are inside of or over top of the wide receiver. We want to create and establish outside leverage to take care of that and really force my opponent to have to throw over the middle of the field, which is where my user is gonna be. The next uh, uh, thing is ball in air defense play ball. Um, you could put this on play receiver too. Uh, these are kind of the two that I roll with. Some people say play receiver is better. Some people say play ball is better. I don't know, honestly, the, the answer. Uh, I tend to say play ball is better though. Cornerback matchups on balance, option defense on conservative, nothing really new there. Um, if, your core, if your opponent is rolling out a lot with his quarterback and he's not really running the ball a lot, I do like to put this on aggressive just because it's going to give us a lot better of a chance whenever we hit the quarterback outside of the pocket to get a fumble. 
And then this is probably the second most important piece of the defense, and that is that our zone drops. So for zone drops, this is what I like to run against compression sets. It's really good against crossers, really good for corner routes, rollout corners, um, really, really good for a lot of different things. And so we're going to put our flats on 30, our curl flats on 10, and our hook curls on 10. And then we're going to go into the nickel three through five. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the cover four show two as an audible. And that's going to be the primary play that we're going to use to shut down this offense. Now, like I said, depending on where the wide side of the field is, if you take a look at the defense here real quick, you're going to notice that the slot corner is on the left side of the three through five. So what we're set up to defend stock is we're set up to, to play a really good defense if the wide side of the field is to the left side. If, they are, if the wide side of the field is to the right side, then we would just flip that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about once we get on the field. So if you look at this, when I audible down, you're going to see that this is the defense we get. Now, because we're on the right side hash mark, that means that the wide side of the field, the, the, the larger majority of the field for the offense to be able to use, is to the left. And so that's why we've got, we, we didn't flip the, the defense. But let me show you something real quick. So let's say that this the ball is here if the ball is there even if the the offense looks like this right here right even if the offense looks like this i just want to take a quick moment and, and share this with you if you play a wide side of the field defense to the short side of the field the hash marks are so critical in how this is going to work and what you're going to notice is we're going to have a ton more room on this right side to be able to try to roll out and throw the crosser. Now, obviously it wasn't open, but I just want you to know that if they if they run with this set right here, like this look right here, it's very likely that they're probably not gonna run a corner route to the left. It's just kind of common sense that they're not gonna wanna do that, okay? And if they do, they're kind of idiots in my opinion, and you're gonna be, it's gonna be really easy for you to stop them. So this is where uh, we, if, if, the, if we know that the ball is on this side of the field, then we would come out in the play flipped and we would create this look. It's gonna give us an, an additional defender to defend to that side. That's really the, the heart of why we do that, okay? So anyways, but we're gonna start kind of standard and we're gonna start with the ball on the right side of the field. So uh, what can they do from gun compression? They can do a lot of different things, but really revolves around two main routes corner routes and crossing routes. And the way that we're gonna really um, defend this is with our zone drops. And so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna kinda basically audible down to cover four show two. Now, I didn't even put a run in here. I don't think, maybe I have it from the tight doubles. Let's see if I have it in here. Uh, I just wanna talk briefly about run defense. So more than likely it's gonna be quick base. That's what they're gonna use. And so I like to just create a simple balanced look just like this right here. And basically, if they run the ball, I'm just going to run right through here. And, and normally, normally gun tight's not like the best thing to run from. Um, it's, 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 I mean, I haven't seen, you know, they've got some 01 traps. They've got some stuff like that. But they don't have like, a, you know, like a trips tight end style where you can really pound the ball. Um, you don't really have to worry about the run. And, and this is my opinion. But, you, I mean, you could just mess around with this. But as you see right there, I mean, it's just not really normally a problem. So if you shift the defensive line one way or the other, typically you're going to have a pretty decent time at stopping this. So really what we want to dive into is a specific adjustment <coughs> Excuse me, to the wide side of the field. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to play uh, quarters coverage to the wide side of the field. And the reason why we're going to do this is this is going to put us in a really good position. So this, this slot corner is probably arguably the most important player on the field for this defense. And the reason why is because he can make or break the, the defense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade our coverage down and we're gonna look something like this right here. Okay, so look something like this right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place both of our outside linebackers. It's the same adjustment, so you can do it relatively quickly. We're gonna put both outside linebackers in seam flat. So it looks just like this right here. Now, we're going to use what I call um, a, a field divide technique, which in essence, it basically asks the question, where can they hit me deep? Where can they hit me deep? And can the, can the quarter cut the field in a, you know, quarters coverage cuts the field in quarters, thirds cut the field in thirds, and then uh, halves cut the field in half. What that basically means is it's all based on numbers, hashes, 
and um, there are numbers and hashes. So to use to illustrate this, I just want you to watch my user for just a moment. Pay attention to Savage here. So this would be an example of right side numbers, right side numbers right here. Okay, this right here is right side hash mark, left side hash mark, and left side numbers. Now, depending on where the ball is on the field, it's going to change how you want to defend. So, for example, if I take this corner on the right and I put him in a cloud flat, okay, um, one of the things that is likely to happen is something like a route combination like this, just for example, okay, um, and, and we're just trying, this is just all hypothetical just to kind of prove the defense, um, but really quickly, I just want to show you. So, so what, what's happened here is he's motioned out this, this uh, receiver. And so what the question that I'm asking is based off of where the ball is on the field, can an inside quarter defend both the tight end and the circle receiver? Can he do both, right? Uh, can the defense basically hold up to both? And so well, let's test it out. Um, what you would think is that the circle receiver will be open. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of protect ourselves a little bit, and then we'll just try to hit the circle receiver. And so if I throw this ball to the right side, you see that he's basically out of bounds. So this now comes back around full circle here to ask this, uh, this secondary question uh, of the defense. And that is basically, whenever you're setting up a defense like this, um, what you wanna really understand is again, where can we get killed? Where can we get killed? So uh, where we can get killed on this is if they do that, let me show you that one more time, same exact adjustment. I'm not gonna do anything different defensively. Uh, I just wanna show you, okay, if they see that once, then maybe their next step is gonna be something like, you know, something like this. Let's just say something like this. And they're really trying to hit this circle receiver. So we're just gonna lob it straight up the field. And as you can see, he's able to get it. So what we've deduced from this experiment is that an inside quarter can't defend both of those in that situation okay especially with motion out but let's ask that same question with any motion to the left side of the field okay so we're going to do the same thing and uh, basically you know this is pretty self-explanatory but it's very hard for me to see that the um, that the um, uh, Lazard here is going to get open so if we do this right here even with streaks on the left side you're going to see that this inside quarter can basically guard both receivers. You see he's literally in the position and he's going to be able to take away. Lazard made the catch of his career. But that that's what, we, that's what we've kind of, uh, that's the picture that we've got. So what we've now learned is if they motion to the outside on the right, we've got to do something. If there's no motion to the right, we're good. We're, we're good with this defense. And so this is where you have to kind of be a little bit more um, ready to adjust and just kind of ready for what the deep, what the offense can throw at you. So you set your defense up just like this right here. You've got your three rec on the left side. This is going to do a good job um, against little cross and wrestle underneath routes, um, motion, slants, stuff like that. And then what we've done is we've basically now, uh, we're going to use her on the right. Okay, so we're going to take away any hitches, anything to the right side. Now, what we could do is we could simply say, well, if we see, um, if we see circle go vertical, we got to go get him. We could do that. I don't like to do that. What I would rather do is if I see, if they do this motion right here, as soon as he moves, I'm putting that safety in a deep half. Remember the deep half is gonna split the field into halves. And so he's gonna be able to basically guard both. You'll see that if I try to throw this, now I've got a safety over there that's gonna pick it off every time. This is why I've talked a lot about this year, why I think it's really, really effective to run cover two to the short side of the field because deep half zones are really really good uh, to the short side of the field from the safety they don't get bombed they also help with a lot of other things as well okay so that's that's part part uh, part one understanding the coverage logic so uh, for example uh, one other route that I want to just show and again this is kind of going into detail about where your user is going to go after this but if they run that motion again as soon as he moves I'm hot routing before they can even get him out there. He ha They have to let him set for this to work anyway. If they motion snap him and he's in motion, he won't beat the coverage. Just, just, just trust me on that. But anyway, if we see this, now I want you just to watch the tight end. So if I try to throw this tight end round, I'm throwing it right at the seam. It's not there. It's not able to be thrown because of the coverage, um, because of the coverage that we're running. So we've basically taken away the verticals. You got to start with four verticals, and then we work to crossers, and we work to. Um, 
uh, corner routes. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about crossers. So we've set the same defense up, and this is the coverage basically. I mean, this is pretty much it, right? This is the video right here. Um, this is the coverage I would recommend. So I would put the defensive end on the left side in a three rec. If you're worried about a rollout guy, if you're playing someone that likes to roll out a lot, put him into a QB spy. Um, I, I have actually gotten a lot out of that adjustment right there. Just put him in a QB spy um, and, and just trust the process. You know, another thing that you could do, um, I, I would just leave it like this. Th this is fine. If, you're, if they're not a rollout guy or you don't have to worry too much about it, then three rec hook. Okay, and you can use a three rec hook as a QB spy, but I would just tell you that, you know, just trust that, trust me, that that's going to work a little bit better. So now let's talk about a crossing route to the, um, so let's streak the, the tight end here. Um, let's just do something like this. You know, this is a popular concept from this formation, right? And I just want you to watch uh, triangle. So if you just watch triangle here, you're going to see he's going to run his crossing route. And if you look at this, I'm passing it up. And you see that's a bang, bang play. That's a bang, bang play. Um, it's not necessarily, um, it's actually relatively likely that you're going to get an interception. If you've got a good click on, uh, you'll get an interception pretty much every time on that route. If, if you want to, you certainly can justify carrying the route over the top. But I'm just telling you from my experience, I would recommend um, I would recommend just leaving it. Just trust this. I mean, triangle is it's a really tight throw, and half the time they're gonna match on him. Right, right there, you see, there's the interception. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, to the remember, remember, this is really important to the short side of the field. They run a crosser from the wide side to the short side. That is likely what's gonna happen. Let me show you one other thing that they can do on this side. Um, just really quickly, I uh, just want to show this because I want you to get a full picture. I got a question last week about how to defend this uh, formation. And it's one of the tougher formations, in my opinion, to consistently stop. I think this formation is really, really hard. But if they motion, um, you'll notice here they can't motion here. They, can't, they can motion here. Okay. But let's say they motion. Um, and let's just, say, let's just say they put him on like a fade. Okay. This is just... Kind of a for instance but like we've created a basically a bunch tight end in, in, in essence right we've created basically a bunch tight end so if i roll out of the pocket right and this pass lead that straight up you see it's a really really tight throw half the time he's going to block or, or drop the ball if you've got a good click on you're going to be able to intercept that if you've got players that have you know speed um, because that's josh jackson 90 speed or 89 speed in Mutt, that's going to be um, Sean Taylor or Mike Evans or whoever with 99 speed once you've powered them all up and done all that. So that's going to help a little bit more against this because the players are going to be more evenly rated. So that's, that's another thing that I want you to know. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about a corner route uh, to the short side of the field. So let's just use this play double spot. We can smart route this tight end. You see it's gonna create this kind of like slant in type of route. If I motion Adams to the right, I just want you to watch where he goes. So this could be a potential combo. This right here could be a potential combo, right? Just kind of a Z spot type of setup. Nothing changes for our defense at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes, okay? It's the exact same defense to this side because this is the short side of the field. Now that they've used their motion, we don't have to put this guy in a deep half. There's nobody that can get to the numbers vertically on us in this play. There's just nobody that can do it. So if you watch snap the ball and just watch this tight end corner, he's running right into a cloud flat that, remember, we've base the line so he has outside leverage. It is absolutely critical to your success. And so you see there we're able to stop a short side corner route. So we stopped a short side crossing route and we stopped a short side uh, corner route. Now I want to talk about a wide side crossing route. This is where again, we talk about auto flip, the importance of auto flip being off. So if the ball is on the left hash, you are coming out in this play flipped. You flip the play at the play call menu. That's my advice to you. So then what you do is you go down to this cover four show two and you set up the exact same coverage, except this time it's in this direction right here, right? So uh, I would recommend, um, just, I, honestly, I just recommend shifting them this way. I think this is the best way to approach it. Uh, but anyways, and then we've got a three rec, right? Or a, or a QB spy. We'll put a QB spy out there just so you can see it. 
Now, I remember our user is going to be in this area, so I do want you to I do want you to kind of see that. So I'll throw a three rec out there in a in a QB spy, but I want you to watch. Um, I want you to watch this crossing route now. So if we roll out and we're trying to hit this crosser, pass lead that to the right, you see that we're right there. This is the key, key, key to defending bunch or trips tight end or any, or not bunch, uh, uh, tight offset, bunch tight end, uh, tight, tight offset, tight end, tight that whatever you want to call it. This is really, really important. When you have an outside quarter zone to the wide side of the field, Okay, it's really it's really really specific to the wide side of the field. Okay, when you have an outside quarter to the wide side of the field, I want you to watch how he plays right here. There's nothing that's they can't pull this because of the type of route they have on that. They cannot pull these guys, and so you see here the outside quarter is the key. Um, if you notice the slot corner, he does drift back there, but he doesn't play it. The outside quarter is who ends up playing this. Okay. And I'll show you this one more time, and you'll see this is very consistent. This is why base align is also important. Um, th this is why base align is also important. So uh, again, let me just flip the flip the defense and set it up here real quickly for you. Again, it's going to look something like this right here, and then we've shaded down. We put these guys into hard flats. We got a cloud flat right there. Right, this is the defense. And then remember that we've got this guy in a uh, outside quarter. Okay, so this is what it looks like right here. So same combo, except this time what we're going to do is we're just going to take the tight end, the X, and we're going to streak him. I just want you to watch how this plays. That outside quarter is not responsible for an interior streak, and as you can see, he takes that route away. Perfect defense. So that's a wide side of the field crossing route. Now let's talk about a wide side of the field uh, corner route. Now to do this, uh, we're actually going to um, we're actually going to go to the tight doubles, and we're going to grab a, um, a corner route from there. We can first. Well, we'll show you a corner route from here first. So if I go to the play mesh spot, okay, um, I can streak the triangle receiver, and I can smart route that square receiver. And you see, it's a really nice little concept. Remember, this is wide side of the field defense. So what we're doing is we're doing these uh, following adjustments right here. This is this looks pr uh, pretty good. Let me show you there. Wide side of the field defense, we play the quarter coverage to that side. We've got that slot corner. This is why the slot corner is so important. You're going to see he's on, he's outside, and that's the big, that's like the one route that can give us a little bit of trouble. That's why it's so important that that slot corner is good. That's why it's so important that that slot corner is a good player. Uh, it's also why it's so important that you base a line because that's going to help you out a ton against that concept. Um, so you're going to see again, if I run the same defense, and again, I'm just using a QB spy here, uh, I want you to watch this throw uh, to mesh spot. Now, this is the one thing that I would say is the hardest to defend. This is where you there are some of the things that we can do to stop this, but this is just something. Now, if you watch, half the time he's going to play it. You see right there? Plays it. Plays it well. Okay? Half the time he's going to play it. It's only to the outside guy, too. It's not to the inside guy. Um, it's it's only to the outside guy. So um, if they have a corner route to the inside guy, and we'll show you that real quick with, um, I think we could show that with this play double spot here. Yeah. So if I have an out, if I have a corner route to Devonte Adams, I want you to watch how this plays, uh, how this plays that specific concept. So again, we're going to shift, kind of set up our our coverage like so. And I just want you to watch how this defends uh, the triangle receiver. You're going to see there is no way in the world that they're going to throw that ball. There's no opening at all for that throw. Zip. Nothing. They can't throw an inside corner route. They can't throw a cross route from the tight end. Okay? So the best thing that they can do is they can run that mesh, um, that mesh spot play. Now, a couple thoughts if you're defending mesh spot, uh, like I was talking about with that corner route coming from the wide side or the wide side defender. Uh, just want to give you kind of my two cents on this. Honestly, I will live with giving it up. Um, if they run it, if they don't smart route it, like if they just run it like this, I just want you to see kind of how it plays. You're going to see, you're going to bag it. It's, it's, not, not, it's not a possibility. The only route that can work is a smart routed corner route to the outside receiver. Again, we talked about this a little bit, but it has to do with the positioning of 
the cloud flat. Where the cloud flat is coming from, because he's so close to the line of scrimmage, this can create a little bit of an issue. Um, this is why, number one reason why we base align. line. Um, so how can we deal with this? Well, the easiest way that I know to deal with this is to take this guy right here and just slide him outside. A simple slide to the outside. And what you'll see is he's got a much wider drop. And now if they try to throw that, it's throwing it into coverage, into coverage, okay? That's option A. Option B um, is to use him as a man-to-man -man defender on anyone that can go vertical on the outside of the left side of the formation. So this is a very specific adjustment. It requires a very specific situation. You don't do this if you don't have to. It's not the base defense. This is a specific adjustment. And what it is is to basically take this guy and put him in the or the, the deep zone or the, the underneath zone and to take Holman and man him up on the square receiver. The reason we're doing this is because um, if they use this um, if they use this mesh concept or this mesh uh, spot play, again we want to watch who can they motion to the left? They can only motion certain players, right? If they motion Lazard, you're gonna see he's gonna stop in a bunch set. This is really important to understand when you're talking about defending. Because again, it comes back to that hash mark tutorial. Where can they hit us over the top? You notice that if they motion anybody from the left right, they can't get into a bunch set. Or they, they, can't, they can't get them all the way outside. The only player that can go outside is indeed that square receiver. So that makes him quote unquote the problem. So we're gonna man him up. And what you're gonna see is if they run the play uh, mesh spot, that exact same setup, because the corner is outside and because he's manned up, there's nowhere to throw it, you've got great leverage and you're gonna shut it down. So that is pretty much the best defense that I've been able to come up with for consistently defending compression sets. I find compression sets to be one of the weirdest sets to defend. And so this has been the best defense that I've been able to come up with to consistently stop it. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And if you want to get my entire 335 wide defensive guide, you can get that in the description of this video for just 15 bucks. Thanks for your time, guys.